Well, I planned a party for Saturday night. I wanted everything to be just right. I invited everyone I knew, even crazy Uncle Lou. Now, people at a party like to eat, so I needed to have some kind of treat. I didn't want to buy a cake, so I finally set my mind to make some cookies. Homemade chocolate chip cookies. So I got out my cooking book. I opened it up and I took a look. I looked and looked and finally I found a cookie recipe. It said you need one cup shortening, three quarter cup brown sugar, three quarter cup granulated sugar, one teaspoon vanilla, one half teaspoon water, two eggs, two cups flour, one teaspoon baking soda, one teaspoon salt, two cups chocolate chips, one cup chopped nuts. It said it would make 100 cookies. Had a bunch of mixing and baking directions. Sounded pretty good to me, except for one problem. Not enough cookies, especially for Uncle Lou. Now I figured a cookie recipe is just like an equation in chemistry. And it was very plain to see I could use a little stoichiometry. Stoichiometry. Don't you enjoy teaching that? Man, there is nothing like getting into the math and stoichiometry. So we're going to take a look at a demonstration today that may help you with that. There is a quote I have right here on the end of a table. A good demonstration is a process, not an event. Basam Shakashiro, world famous demonstrators, written four excellent books on chemical demonstrations. So we're going to try to turn this demonstration into a learning experience. A good demonstrator can do that. Instead of just making something go boom, wake the kids up, we're going to make it into a real chemical demonstration. What makes a good demonstrator? Somebody that's enthusiastic. If your teacher's enthusiastic, you may pay attention to them. Nobody likes to see somebody droning on in a monotone about stoichiometry. Uh, one that gets the idea across. One that uses feedback. If you get feedback with a demonstration from your students or your uh, peers, other teachers, you can improve the way you're using a demonstration. It can become a real teaching moment. This demonstration, which some people call the whoosh bottle, I call it the big ethanol explosion, I use the first day of class. Now let me try to show you how I might use it the first day of class. So you'll be my class and we'll start now. Well, I'm glad you're here. You all had biology last year. I'm going to try to relate the class that you're now in chemistry to what you had in biology and show you that you already know some of this stuff and show you where we're kind of going to go this year. I'm going to go up to this uh, very high-tech board here, and I'm going to ask you to tell me what the formula for ethanol is. And I'm going to write that down in a moment, or actually ask you to tell me what ethanol is, I should say because I've got a container right here, and we're going to put some ethanol in it. Ethanol is this fluid here, ethyl alcohol, some people call it. And I've put some into this graduated cylinder that you probably use in uh, biology. What is ethanol? Well, that's right, Bobby. Ethanol is, is something used in fuel. That's right. It's used in gasoline nowadays. And it has other uses. That's right, Sally. It's an antiseptic. It can be used as an antiseptic to sterilize things and wounds. What's that, Bobby? What did you say? You drink ethanol? I, I hope I didn't hear you. Oh, yeah, you can drink it, but you're not the right age, Bobby. So uh, we'll be talking to your parents tonight. All right, now the formula for ethanol, and I'm going to write it up here. Let's see. And I wouldn't expect you to know this yet. But you probably guessed from biology, that's carbon, that's hydrogen. And it's got this oxygen and hydrogen group on there. And we're going to react it with some, something in the air. So let's take a look at that reaction. First, I have to put the actual ethanol in this container here. And you may see that uh, I have a blast shield here in case something goes wrong. And I've got some goggles on. And I'm, I'm going to put these ear protectors on. That may be a hint for you. You may want to cup your ears. Don't stick your fingers in them, because they could go right into your brains, and they could squirt out your nose. So I've, I've done this now. So uh, 
Okay, now we're going to turn the lights down a little bit, kids. So, you know, when the lights go down, I want you guys to behave yourself. Uh, that'll be a good thing. I'm going to light this with this little match here. There we go. And, oh, you know, I forgot one thing. It turns out that the liquid itself is not that important. It's really the vapors that are important in this reaction you're about to see. So I'm going to pour the vapors, uh, the liquid out. While the vapors, the ethanol vapors, are the important part. So there, I've poured out the uh, fluid. I'm going to move that away. And why well, look, here I've got my uh, wood splint again. And now we're going to get the lights down. And I'm going to hold it with the tongs. And I think you'll see why in a moment. Don't forget to cup your ears now. So here we go. We're going to just drop this in. <laughs> well, that was nice, wasn't it? I see we woke up Bobby in the back. He had a little hangover or something. OK. Sorry, Bobby. We'll, we'll get you an aspirin. Um, no, where's my chalk here? So what do you think that actually reacted with in the air? There's a gas that you breathe in that you need for life. Yes, that's right, oxygen. Perhaps you remember from biology that it comes with a friend. It's twin brother, it's diatomic oxygen. And then that yields or produces. That's what this arrow means. And then what are the products of this? The products are the stuff on the other side. Now, you may have had something in biology about products, and you may have forgotten it over the summer. I know you wouldn't, but you may have. There's a hint. You give off this gas when you burn food, when you do. That's right, carbon dioxide. We write it like that. And you've all heard of carbon dioxide. And you give off a second gas. No, 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 not that one, Bobby. Um, one that you exhale in the wintertime. You could see those water vapors, those water droplets forming. That's right, water. And we're going to learn to balance this equation a little bit later, but not today. So this is where we're going to be going this semester. We'll be working with stuff like this. So you'll need to know the symbols, some of the names, and blah, blah, blah. Whatever else you do the first year. So I'm, I'm first day. So I'm kind of done with it. That might make a nice demonstration to start with. This is a demonstration that you can use a gazillion places. And I've, I've made a list here. So let me read these to you. Um, exo thermic, exothermic reaction. Sure, it gives off heat. Activation energy. I needed to get it activated to start. Combustion. I could do delta H, H calculations, probably not the first day, or you can have a much smaller class the second day. Um, alternative fuels. Oxidation reduction. Stoichiometry. You could, you know, figure out how much energy, or uh, how much products were given off, et cetera, et cetera, for the amount that you put in. This reaction is said to be exocharmic. That was an article in the Journal of ChemEd by Remet a number of years ago. He said any reaction that gives off a lot of energy rapidly is inherently charmic. So it's exocharmic. It gives off charm. This one does. And this is a good one to end the year with, too, because you know, you could do the same thing at the end. Only this time, they may even know the formula for ethanol and all those things. And you can do all those different calculations and things I just talked about, and in one period, review the entire year's worth of work. It's a, you can do oxidation numbers. It's almost unlimited what you could do with this reaction. So it's just not blowing something up. It's a process, not at just an event. You can relate it even to four-cycle engines like we have over here, the four-stroke engine. This was the power stroke, OK? Now, let's try it again, because you know what are your kids going to say? Do it again. Well, all right, if you're going to do it again, let me give you a few safety tips. Wait until you're sure it's out before you put the fuel back in. So we'll put some back in. Here's some ethanol. We'll shake it around to make sure it's all volatilized. We'll pour some out. OK. We'll get a match. We'll light this. 
We'll take the tongues. Oh, crud. It didn't work. Now, I get safety things. Sometimes it will work, so just be prepared for that. And then you can ask them, why didn't it work? Oh, this would not be the first day. You need to go to the exhaust cycle. It's filled with carbon dioxide. And un okay, there's plenty of fuel. I added more fuel, but uh, we need to have an exhaust stroke. This drawing, by the way, comes from John Fortman at Wright State. Got a number of very nice analogies. Find them in the journal of Chem and other, Chem Ed and other places. Then we have a compression stroke in the four cycle engine and an intake stroke. You could even get four kids up to do this kind of a little dance in front of the class. You could get 16 kids up to show different kind of car. You could, again, the, uh, it's unlimited what you could do with it. The songs you heard as you came in were from Mike Offit's albums of chemistry song, chemistry song bags. I can't recommend these enough. They cover a whole bunch of topics in chemistry. Okay, these are fabulous. A um, couple of safety precautions. One, use a blast shield. Two, you'll notice my bottle is taped. Tape it, because if it blows up, and you, you don't want to be picking shards of shrapnel, plastic shrapnel out of your head. If you enjoy that, then don't tape it. Um, don't use the bottle too often. After 10 times, get rid of it. They're cheap. I know, where do you get it? The administrators have one of these in their office. Get one, use it 10 times, and return it. The heck, you could get a new one. That's, you know, the heck. They, they may wonder why there's tape on them all of a sudden, but it won't bother them long. Um, oh, wait, I can't say that. I can't. Oh, wait, sorry. <laughs> okay. Um, don't warm the alcohol. And between periods, to get it to go, flush it out with some air. You know, put it, uh, if you have an air hose, do that. Flush it. Don't flush it out with oxygen. The whole thing will blow up and you'll kill yourself. Don't use a square bottle. Sometimes the water bottles are square. They will blow up. I've, I was running a workshop. A teacher brought a square one in. I said, you, let's not do it in that. She said, let's do it in that. I said, okay, we'll do it. We're going to tape it. I'm going to say it might blow up and blah, blah, blah. Anyway, to make a long story short, she put it in and it blew up. It didn't explode, the, the tape stopped it, but the top like kind of came over and got hung up on the tape and life was good. And she goes, oh, okay. Um, and then sometimes they have handles on them. I don't think I'd even do it with that because the plastic is stressed in those parts, but uh, I'd use this kind if you can find them. That's what I've always used. Let me see what else I have under safety, yeah. Don't use glass, you can find those terrarium ones. Bad thing, if the glass shatters, that's, that's not good at all. All right, let me show you another one. I'm gonna take the safety shield down with ethanol. This, uh, this one involves two nails stuck in there. The nails aren't touching, they're close to each other. And uh, I've put a few drops of ethanol in from a barrel pipette. All right, so you can do the same thing. And you don't want, if you're gonna do this one in your class, you don't wanna do it under a light because that would be a bad thing. Um, and you want to use a soft object here like this. Don't use a real rubber stopper. I saw this done in the University of Arizona and on the second floor of their uh, second story of the demonstration room, it was a big lecture hall. It blew through the ceiling tiles. However, if that's the desired effect, then be sure to use a strong rubber stopper. Um, you can use various things on there. This definitely shows an automobile engine and we're gonna spark it for the power stroke because you need a spark plug. This is a Tesla coil. This is equivalent to rubbing your feet across the rug for 5,000 miles and touching your cat, okay? So let me show you. I'm gonna put this sparking on here so there's gonna be a little arcing there and see if the camera can pick that up. It's going to be right on the edge here. Okay. Now I'm going to touch it to these nails and I'm hoping it's going to work and you want to have a little gap in between there just like the spark plug in your car does. So again, you may want to cup your ears. This can sometimes be loud. It's usually not too bad, but um, we okay? All right, here we go. Aha, nailed somebody out there, good. No, I didn't. All right. So, and, and 
again, you can use this demonstration many times during the year. You can set it up this way. You can set it up this way. You can set it up any way you want. And it's really the vapors that are burning. It is not the liquid, per se. Okay, Bill Deese does this in a bottle like this, but he uses isopropyl. I believe it's 70% isopropyl alcohol. And sometimes you can get an ice flame to just creep down the side, and it's not a big boom. So if boom is scary, you might want to try it with isopropyl alcohol. Okay, let me see for my notes if there's anything else. No, there's not. So to sum it up, this is a wonderful reaction. You can do a million things with it and use it over and over during the year, and that's not bad at all. And it's easy to set up.